Ladies and gentlemen, students, at this time, I'd ask you all to please stand as we honor our nation and the flag with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. Hockey Day in the Berg continues here on FATV. We are ready for the second game of our triple header, one that hits the Mustangs of Milton Academy against the St. George's School Dragons. Milton Academy, of course, the alma mater of Jake Tebow, the person for whom this day is meant. TV, FATV.org slash TBO14 takes you to the GoFundMe page for the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. All proceeds and benefits from the triple header here at the Wallace Civic Center go to benefit that tremendous cause. We have, Dan, a pretty darn good game of hockey here between Milton Academy and St. George's. Indeed, as we go into the second of our three games, it's a prep school hockey. Milton Academy 11-4-2 this year, 65 goals scored, 43 conceded. St. George's school 10-8, they've scored and conceded 46 goals. And St. George is on a bit of a tailspin. They've lost their last four games. Most recently, a 2 0 loss to Dexter Southfield on Wednesday, in which they were outshot 37 15. St. George is winless since January the 14th. That game of victory over Groton. Other side of the equation for the Milton Academy. Three straight wins for them. They defeated the Governor's Academy, the Lawrence Academy, and Pomfret most recently. That last game coming on Saturday, January the 21st a 6-4 win for the Mustangs. Indeed, Henry Cohen had two goals and assists. Jake Paul with a goal and two assists. Mika Kalachian, three assists and goals each for Dylan Hunt, Nate Landau, and William Kanata. Harrison Brown made 21 saves and they're gonna go back to the 18-year-old keeper from St. Louis, Missouri for his eighth appearance of the season. 4-2-1 record, two shutouts, 226 goals against him, 928 save percentage. Milton Academy on your left in the white jerseys, navy blue shorts. On the other side, St. George's in black with red and white trim. And here with the play-by-play -play for period number one is Dan Bola. Indeed, it'll be 18-minute periods in prep school hockey. All right, Milton dumping it in. William Canada will go and chase that one. Sets into the boards by Jake McIntosh. Into the right wing corner, they'll battle for it. Picked up at the right point by Dylan Hunt. Now backhanded wide of the cage and the keeper, Ryder Shea, 16-year-old from Marlboro. Panthers eat all the meat. Uh, I guess so, Mason Chen with a shot, and the second shot goes off the side of the net. I think the first one was turned aside by Shea there. Already a couple shots on the board. You see Ryder Shea wearing that very non-traditional number 16. Very unusual to see a goaltender wear a number of the teens. It's dumped in, and Colin Walsh will go and retreat 22 points on the year for Walsh. Centered, but nobody there to take it. Is that one sent to the red line, dumped in, and Rockaby Hori will go and pursue it. Now thrown out in front by Kalichian, but nobody to settle. Jake Pohl, he had two goals last year in the game between these two sides. Well, in the game here at the Civic Center as part of Hockey Day in the Berg. And that was a game that the Pomfret School ended up winning 3-2 in overtime. Milton Academy looking for better fortune this year. We've already had our 3-2 over what time loss. This is true. Good. Behind the net, Anson Parker will go and carry it up for St. George's on the near side for Danny Buckley. 
You know, the good thing about booking Fitchburg and St. Bernard's in the third and final game is that a Fitchburg team can't go winless today. The home side, a local team is going to get at least one victory, dang it. You'll have to hope. <laughs> well. Unless they tie. Yeah. What if they tie? Oh, no. There's a stretch pass picked up by Jonathan Carreri. Carreri having trouble settle now. It gets a pass off, and there is Madden Powers. 19-year-old unable to settle. Danny Lee with a shot through traffic. Bunch of sticks going at it in the slot. To the left wing corner it'll go. Back in the St. George's end where they'll take a breather. 15.45 to go in the first period. First two shots of the game going to Milton. As it flipped up to the red line, settled down by Connor Lee. In and around the boards. Into the right wing corner will be taken by Owen Dratty. Dratty up the near side, gets the red line and dumps in from there. Harrison Brown, he was the keeper in net for Milton last year during off the day in the Berg. It's moved along, this is Kanata on the right circle. His pass goes off the skate, eventually makes its way to Anthony Sergeyev. In the left side, taken by Chen, thrown towards goal. Didn't quite get all the way to Shea, I don't believe. Three minutes gone in the first. And players colliding at center ice. Equipment going flying. The penalty's going to be against, well, is it going to be against Milton? Ryder Shea started making a beeline to the bench, and then he doubled back when it took a moment for the whistle to blow when Milton touched it. Colin Walsh got bowled into. He lost his glove. He lost his stick. He lost his footing. William Kanata is going to lose two minutes of his life in the penalty box. But I still think Walsh got the worst of that exchange. I've also been part of a collision with my uh, goaltending experience, if you will, where I had equipment going flying. That was me going after well, a loose ball in street hockey, just knocking it away, and then the collision. And then, uh, and then my team got called for a penalty. Well, but you cleared the ball, right? You did yeah. your job. Mm -hmm. Okay. My glove ended up 25 feet away from where I was. Well, you know, detail. Draw will come to the left of Brown. St. George's on the first power play of the game. We'll be looking for their first shot. And that one turned wide off a skate in front. Cross ice held in the right circle. Now to the left. Pinballs around. And Milton able to take it and skate it up. And here is Paul. Paul up the left side. Dispossessed by Everett Baldwin. 16-year-old defender. It's on the far side now. Four players trying to pin it in there. You see Paul and Kalichian for Milton Academy. And yes, yeah, trying to pin it in there and kill some time. After all, that's what they're looking to do when they are on the kill, which they will be for 80 seconds more. Tate Pecknold. Move it for Baldwin. He'll skate it up ice on the near side for Colin Walsh. Pecknold takes a tumble after the collision. William Kanata, two minute minor for interference, time for the penalty, 3-11 first period. Interference was ultimately the call against Kanata, which sounds about right. I don't think the puck was anywhere near that collision. No, no, that, that, he interfered with the man. There's the shot taken by Baldwin as he gains the zone, and it's gobbled up by Brown. Everett Baldwin, two goals, six assists. Coming into today, the 16-year-old defenseman from Rumford, Rhode Island. Harrison Brown, just his eighth game of the season for the Mustangs. Sam Caulfield has had the majority of the time between the pipes. Caulfield's had some pretty stellar numbers as a 16-year-old. He's from Needham, 149 goals gets 956 save percentage. But he'll move aside for Brown today. Brown makes another stop there. As you mentioned, Brown does have experience on this rink. Played a year last year during Hockey Day in the Berg. And that year, they were Milton was running a tandem with another keeper whose name escapes me. But good to see, you know, they're still like moving around with the uh, the tandems getting development for multiple goaltenders. Shot from the right side, cut down by Brown. Now on that right side, that'll be kept in. Yes, it will by Bratty. Goes across to the near side of McIntosh. His shot goes off of Connor Lee in front and deflects into the right wing corner. Now settled on the right side by Owen Mulhern. There's a shot in front, loose puck, battling for it. For a moment, uh, Jake McIntosh thought they'd scored. 
to be quite honest with you for a moment, I thought they'd scored. The gentleman with the orange stripes disagree, and then it may have come off its moorings as well. We'll get a draw. 4.59 gone in the first period. 12 seconds left on the penalty to William Kadata. I think that was the reason the whistle blew. Brown just got pushed back into the net, and it came just a little bit loose. But, you know, he's still loose. Loose is loose. And quickly making his way up by Brendan Marr. Gets dispossessed. Colin Walsh on the other end. Walsh with 22 points on the campaign. Sends it across, but he finds Kanata, who's fresh out of the box, as the Mustangs back to full strength. Five shots on that man advantage for St. George's. The left wing corner, Kanata keeping a hold on it. He'll move it up ice. Stretches it along, will not be icing. It's hybrid icing, NCAA rules for the most part in effect here in prep school hockey. And Milton clearly closer to the puck. The left point shot saved by Shea. And he'll glove it. Could not really find uh, solid numbers for the goalkeepers, I will admit. It's like sometimes it's uh, trying trying to get prep stats is like blood from a stone. <laughs> but based on reasonable estimates, Shea's got maybe a round of goals against in the 230, save percentage in the low 920s. He's been tandeming with Matthew Delarusso, who's a year older than him. I also talked about this last year, but for these prep school games, I prefer to use the ages of the players as opposed to what classes they're in because players reclassify, players do post-grad years. This is true. So I think that's just easier. That backhander goes off the side of the net, another chance in front. The original one there by Mika Pelagian. And that one's sent down the river and it will go for an icing as Mason Chen will go and retrieve. 11.45 to go in the first period, no score. First three shots to Milton, last five to St. George's. One of the changes, too, from last year was last year, it was Milton that was wearing the dark colored unis, the blues. And Poffer had the whites. This year, it's the other way around. As there's a shot to goal! It was Henry Cohen who picked it up in the left circle and put it past Shea. And the first strike go to the Mustangs. Jake Paul will lead the handshake line. Paul, the 18-year-old from Chicago, picks up his 10th goal of the season. Give him 10 assists as well, make it 20 points on the year for the Windy City native. And you can see why I thought it was Cohen, because Cohen was right in the way there. Now that's stolen away, dropped off. But Powers trying to find Carreri. But that doesn't go to plan for the Mustangs. But they do have the opening strike nonetheless. And Paul, I think he likes playing in this building. He scored both goals last year. There's a shot and a save by Brown off the stick of Cortland Hare. Look at first first point of the campaign. You know, he scored both goals last year to Jake Paul for the Mustangs. And he's got the first goal of this contest for Milton Academy. Draw will come to the right side of Harrison Brown. 5'11", 18-year-old from St. Louis. That puck will come out of the zone. Settled by Sergeyev. Along for Kanata. Dumps it in. Jake McIntosh will intercept. Stretching up Bison down. Number seven, Jacob Paul. Assisted by number 11, Mika Kalekian. And number 21, Henry Cohen. Time of that goal, 6-19, first period. Glitchin and Cohen get the assists on that one. glitchin has got 17 assists on the campaign, and Cohen now his sixth. Oh, and as we mentioned, Pohl's 10th goal of the season. That's the team leader. glitchin has got eight in second place. After the icing, draw one by St. George's. Shot is blocked. Milton moving it up ice from William Kanata. Moved along ever more. And with a touch there from Sergeyev, Kanata along right side, Jackson Fawnen. One of the two captains along with, with Jake Cole. 
Is that one sent around the boards and out of the zone where Dylan Hunt will go and retrieve? Let's see if we can get Dylan Hunt to get some shots on Ryder Shea. It'll be Marlboro on Marlboro Violence. Panthers eat. Panther beat? <laughs> that sounds a little awkward. Yeah, each team does have a Marlboro native. I don't know what to do. For the crowd who is unfamiliar, John Grugerty, my broadcast partner, is a Marlboro native. This is true. Factual statement. Whereas myself, Daniel Bolak, is from Fitchburg. There are no Fitchburg players on these teams. Sad but, times. But as we know, Jake Tebow, the Fitchburg native, played for Milton Academy. He's the reason we're here today. As the Mustangs try to move it up ice on the near side. Nick Kalichian had it dispossessed. Dumped back in by St. George's. Shot from the right side. Turned away by Brown. Will Longfield had the shot there. As the Dragons trying to take advantage of the turnover. Cohen trying to win that puck. Ends up popping free to Shea, who will stick that along. That was very sloppy goalkeeping by Harrison Brown. Basically gifted St. George's with the opportunity. But he was able to turn away the shot. Now behind the net. A pass out in front. A couple of different Mustangs looking for the puck, but it splits both of them. It comes all the way out to the Mustang end, where they'll have to go and reset and regroup. And take pack goals. We'll take it away. Gets the red line. Moves it along for Danny Buckley. Buckley's shot is turned aside. Brown with the stop. On the near side stretch pass. See if they win the race for the icing. They will. Brendan Marr gets there first. Marr trying to center. The pressure there. Powers moving it along to the right wing corner. Now it held at the point by Chen. This pass will be knocked down by Pecknold. And he'll dump it around the boards. On the far side, hops over a stick. And it's dumped back in. Brown will play it along. Nobody actively checking. So he's got to play it all. And the Mustangs will move it to the blue line. Take it in the zone. And passed along one timer deflected up into the net and get out of play. 8.01 to go, first period, 1 0 Milton in front. That was a very dangerous opportunity for the Mustangs, but Everett Baldwin was able to get his stick in there. Baldwin, the 16 year old from Rumford, Rhode Island. Hey, Dan, I have a question. Yes. Where is Rumford, Rhode Island? Well, Don't I say Rhode Island. Well, I imagine if you throw a dart at the state of Rhode Island. <laughs> Listen, the state of Rhode Island is the size of a dart. That's cheating. <laughs> I. I did not major in Rhode Island geography. Okay. So I'm not terribly useful when it comes to that. You'll see a lot of Rhode Island natives on the St. George's team. The only school in the ISL located outside the state of Massachusetts. They are, of course, located in Rhode Island. I gathered that. They are located in Middletown. That, I know, is in the southeast part of the state. You mean it's not in the middle? Well, that would just make too much sense now, wouldn't it? I suppose you have a point. Dragons trying to jump on it on the near side. Ben Buckley will dump it around the boards. Danny Lee. We'll move it along on the far side. The pressure there from St. George's. Held to the right point. Pass intercepted. Kalich in. The stretch pass for, for Jake Paul. Paul has the opening strike in this contest. He protects the puck. Gets it to the left side for Cohen. Cohen with some moves. Kalich in shot. Rises a bit too high. Strong pressure there from the Mustangs. I think he beat Shea there, but he also beat the goalpost. Needed a lot higher than four feet. Makes its way into the Mustang end. Gets tied up behind the net. And Milton will move it along. Pass for Cohen. Is knocked down by the Dragons. Jagger Lucas getting his stick in the way. And on the re-entry, offside is going to be called. 6-12 to go in the first. Shots 8-5 in favor of St. George's. Kulichian did everything he could to get back to the blue line, but Lee didn't see him deep, in, deep enough in the zone. Man in the striped shirt did, though, and he's the one whose opinion matters. Can someone please tell Jagger Lucas to take the, the back of his shirt down because it's very distracting. There it goes. Thank you. It fell on its own, and it's back up. 
It's caught on his head. You see that, right, Dan? Yeah, that happens sometimes. Those things just stick out there as Lucas will nudge it along on the near side with Portland Hare. Now we push into the Mustang end where Connor Lee will go and move it along. Up the middle of the ice and now to the far side. Mustangs making their way, shot from the far side by Nate Landau. Will be turned aside by Shea. In the right wing corner. And it's gonna be Lucas who will take that away. 16 year old from Dix Hills, New York. On the far side. We see Madden Powers gaining the zone for the Mustangs. In the corner, trying to set a one-timer. Was looking for Carreri deep in the slot. Now to the point, fought in shot. Is deflected wide into the right wing corner. Five minutes to go in the first period. One nothing to Milton. Is that one cleared to the red line. Hunt waited, and now will dump in. And first to arrive, I think, is going to be Carreri there. Jumping on that one, trying to beat Anson Parker to the puck. And Milton with the pressure. I mean, they're being outshot, but it definitely feels like Milton's been better at dictating the pace of play. Really dumped in by the Dragons and Owen up Mulhern, and it will be covered for a draw. Opportunities for St. George's have been few and far between. Although, as you said, Dan, they do lead. Shots on goal unofficially 8-6 in favor of the Dragons. Eight saves you see for the 18-year-old keeper and Harrison Brown. The draw will come to the left of Brown and ultimately controlled by the Dragons. Behind the net, a lot of stick work to try to poke that free. Comes to the right point, shot punched away with authority by Brown. Everett Baldwin had that shot from that right point. Again, folks, this game is the second of three. Third and final game of our triple header. Kicks off at 7.30. Well, puck drops at 7.30, I should say. It'll be Fitchburg Bonny Tech taking on St. Bernard's. The capper to a tremendous day of hockey here on FATV. Interesting, you know, getting to see three different levels of hockey, and you see the different intricacies between the sports. In fact, for every game that goes on, we actually drop an official. We drop an official. We shorten the periods. We probably slow down the play a little bit. I think we can tell, you know, this game's a little bit slower than the Fitchburg Plymouth game. The boarding is going to be the call going against Milton Academy. And Mason Chen is going to sit in the naughty bin. Chen, the 18 year old from Toronto, will spend two minutes thinking about what he's done. St. George's will have their second power play with 3.59 to go in the first. You know, I probably shouldn't infantilize hockey players when they go to the penalty box so much, but it's so very easy. It's very, very, very similar to just be told, go to your room. After all, they did a bad thing. They have to. It's true. They've lost their privilege of playing hockey. And two minutes or less. Milton being pretty aggressive here on this kill. They did well to control the puck for significant stretches of that first power play. It looks like they're doing so again. Really playing keep away now with St. George's. Mustangs galloping around the Dragons. Can't hit them with fire if they're going too fast for you. This is true. Although I have heard that you should not toy with dragons too much, for you are crunchy and taste good with ketchup. See that clearing attempt, the stick blade flying. And now William Kanata gaining the zone, staying with it all the way, and nearly following on was Ryan Shea. Weren't able to get a shot away, but still, that shows how strong this Milton Academy penalty kill is. 2.40 to go for the first period, 40 seconds on the penalty to Chen. And St. George's looking for a chance here. And that shot is going to be gobbled up by Brown, but off the stick of Buckley. Milton Academy really has controlled the pace 
even though they are a man down. Now we're going to have to take a moment here to collect all of the various shards of hardware that are all over the ice. There's one shattered stick behind the Mustang net. There's another at center ice. I don't know where these guys got their wood, but they might want to go back for a repo. Gotta hope that lasted more than just one game. Face off one directly to Brown, and he will cover. I imagine that's just a terrible feeling. You know, your first, first game or your first real shot with a new stick, and it just explodes. Yeah. Crash. At that point, you're demanding, you're demanding uh, satisfaction by uh, some form of warranty. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I require recompense. Ryan Shea came off the ice for a moment. I guess check on something. There might have been his stick that failed him. He's come back now. He's back on the bench there for Build Academy. And again, St. George is really struggling. They got a couple shots on Brown, but uh, it definitely felt like, it, once again, Build Academy played like the better team on the St. George's power play. We're now under two minutes to go in the first period. one nothing to the Mustangs on Jake Cole's 10th goal of the season. In a way, it's got to feel unfair if you're St. George's. It's like, wait a second, these guys are controlling the pace of play. They're getting a bunch of shots on us, and then they get an extra dude on the ice? That's not fair. And yet, somehow, St. George's is still winning in the shots on goal battle, 11 to 7, as offsides is called against the Mustangs. Very interesting first period between these two teams. That luckily, captain for the Dragons will take it with the draw. As Hanson Parker will retrieve on the near side. There's a stretch to the right. That one goes through the arms of Walsh. It'll be settled and picked up by the Dragons on the right side. Pecknold trying to center it. It splits everyone past the left point. Parker will go and retrieve with 70 seconds to go in the frame. Off the boards before him. Has that taken by Milton. We duck right back in the zone. With 60 seconds before him. With that pressure there by the Mustangs. Into the left wing corner, back in the dragon end. Centering around and protecting the puck is Walsh. He's able to push it up ice. And down it will go. Won't go for icing. That's a great time to get some fresh legs on the ice. And Milton's like, that's a great time for us to try to take advantage of something. That's gaining the zone was Brendan Marr. It's a long stretch pass to Marr. Nearly got him a breakaway opportunity. Marr's able to get a shot. A couple of chances jamming in deep in the slot. And another chance, I think that's punched aside there by Shea. 20 seconds to go in the frame. From the right wing corner. Out to the point, right side. Jackson Fawnen to the left. Shot through traffic, didn't find its way through. Second one, great reactionary save by Shea. Getting the five hole shot, another shot. Down in front, Shea makes the save again. It's still loose in front of the blue paint. And it's finally clear from Danger. And down the ice, that will bring an end to the first period. A few great shots by Milton Academy, but Ryder Shea playing tough in goal. Able to limit it to just one goal for the Mustangs in the first 20 minutes. First and in, 18 minutes. And in those closing moments, Dan, it was Shea standing tall in net, but it was also, it felt like every other dragon on the ice at one point or another in the dying seconds there. Jagger Lucas got his stick in and just cleared the puck away. It was loose in between the legs of Ryder Shea. Shea had no idea where it was, and to make matters worse, he had fallen on his backside. He was in no position to collect the puck and make a save if Milton Academy got a shot off. But Jagger Lucas did tremendous work just defensively getting his stick in there, rifling that shot down the ice, clearing it out of danger, sending us into the locker rooms with the score one nothing in favor of the Milton Academy. The shots were 11-10 in favor of St. George's, but Milton probably had the more dynamic change chances. I mean, of those 11 shots, how many of those do you think really did test Harrison Brown? Not, uh, not too many. You know, Brown had to make some nice saves. I'm not saying he didn't do anything in that first period, but I think he would agree that Ryder Shea had the harder go of it in those first 18 minutes. Yeah, I would agree with that. Brown looked positionally solid. 
looked like he was sticking with the play and doing well to keep that and keep the Dragons at bay. I mean, just his rebound control looks solid. I can't really remember any juicy rebounds he gave up. And not really that much in terms of great A scoring opportunities for St. George's. Again, 11 shots on goal in 18 minutes. It wasn't a bad showing. Just they're looking for a little more consistency, I think, in the offense. A little more consistency needed from St. George's for Milton Academy. You've got to think just keep putting on the pressure. Pedal to the metal. Keep going at them. You've got the lead. Try to expand it. We will see if they can do that. But for now, Dan and I will take the break with the players. We will be back with the second period of hockey here from the Wallace Civic Center. It's Hockey Day in the Berg on FATV. Back here at the Wallace Civic Center as we are ready for the second period of our second game on the Hockey Day in the Berg triple header. Again, all proceeds from today's festivities at the Wallace Civic Center going to the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. If you would like, a do like to make a donation, you can go to fatv.org slash TBO14, Tango Bravo Oscar 1-4. All proceeds going to help the medical expenses and the rehabilitation of Jake Tebow, of course, Fitchburg native, former hockey player for the Milton Academy, suffered a terrible injury on the ice and now is working his way back and trying to recover and continuing to fight on. Tebow tough, as they say. Indeed. Keeps grinding away at it. You know, he was able, with assistance, to walk at graduation from Middle Academy, now a freshman at Babson College. And you see the graphic on your screen again, fatv.org slash Tebow14. That will take you right to the GoFundMe page. You also have a QR code in the corner. I put that in yesterday. I verify that it works. Tremendous. We heard uh, some words that Jake had written before puck drop at the first game. Jake was here and dropped the ceremonial first puck before the Fitchburg State game against Plymouth State. Jake said that he would not rest until he was able to look in the eye every single person who had helped him on his journey. So we send, obviously, all our thoughts and all our best to Jake and the entire Tebow family. Again, fatv.org slash TBO14 for the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. But Dan, in order to have a triple header of hockey games honoring Jake Tebow, you have to have hockey games. And this particular hockey game has been a doozy. Milton leads St. George's 1-0 after one period. Shots on goal 11-10 in favor of the Dragons, but that's a little deceiving. Even though St. George's, so, so even though St. George's has had uh, more shots, Milton has had the juicier chances. And let's actually look at some of those now. Plenty of opportunities in the first period. We'll take a look at some of the highlights of that first 18 minutes of action. Just hard hitting action. You see right here, a nice hit delivered to Dylan Hunt. And down this side of the ice, a good save by Harrison Brown, goaltender for the Mustangs. Brown made a couple of impressive stops. His counterpart on the other side, Ryder Shea, mostly had a good period, was unable to turn away that shot. Jake Hole, the goal scorer for the Mustangs. You can see William Kanata getting into the zone, and that was one of the things that I think Milton was able to do quite well was pressure when they were on the kill, and then the helter skelter at the end of the first period. That was in the dying seconds. You saw Shea knocked on his backside, really unable to defend himself, but Jagger Lucas got in there, poked the puck away, kept it 1 0, and that is where we stand as we get ready for the second period. St. George's in the black. Mustangs of Milton in the white face off is won by Milton, sent down, and immediately we have a player slow to get up. That's Jake Pohl, who took a big hit. Pohl just now gathering himself and heading for his bench. He's basically doubled over. But he will get there on his own power. Milton will change personnel. Controlled for St. George's by Jake McIntosh. He dumps it in for Colin Walsh. Walsh gives chase, pressured by Mason Chen. Chen's able to poke it ahead to a teammate and it'll be cleared by Anthony Sergeyev. 
Sergeyev dumps it in, but it's picked up by St. George's. Back out to the neutral zone and into Milton territory. Delayed off sides against the Dragons, so they have to tag up and let, <clears throat> let the Mustangs make their way out. Gives Chen a chance to clear, goes all the way down. No icing indicated. Play continues on. Along the near side boards now, Ben Buckley feels as though he was tripped. Officials don't agree, he just lost his footing. Milton with it across the blue line. Shot kick save made by Shea off the stick of Sergeyev. Back out to the point for Hunt. He sends it forward, shot blocked. That one didn't get through. Owen Mulhern gives chase for St. George's. Hunt plays it along the near side boards, back behind the dragon net. Chased there by Rocco Biafore. Sent out to Danny Buckley. Buckley gains the blue line, then the red, and he dumps it in, basically on net. Harrison Brown will stick it along to the near side. Back out to center ice, grabbed there by Anson Parker. Parker will send it right back in, and actually we will get a whistle as the puck goes out of play. 16.20 to go, second period. We are now even in shots on goal, 11 aside. We're gonna get a face off in the St. George's end. Portland Hare and Madden Powers. Hare emerges victorious there, defying the fable. Puck comes along the near side and it's grabbed by Mason Chen. Tries to clear it to his other defenseman. Aggressively checked there by Jagger Lucas. Milton Academy having a lot of trouble getting it out of their own zone. Brendan Marr sends it back for Chen. Chen sends it back along the boards for Parker. Parker's able to clear, it's played there by Pecknell. I'm looking at the wrong roster. It's played there by Carreri. Carreri sends it in. Marr gives chase back behind the dragon net. Grabbed there by Will Longfield. Back out to Chen, he keeps it in. This is Powers. Back behind the net now. Comes to the near board off the stick of Longfield again. Marr, centering pass, one-timer deflected. Didn't get it toward the net. Good shot by Kerr Heath, but it didn't get all the way through. Mason Chen gathers at the center line. Skates it across the blue. Back shot goes wide. Another opportunity and a goal! Jonathan Carreri, the 16-year-old from Thornhill, Ontario, leads the high five line. The initial shot went wide of the net, but Shea committed very hard to defending it. We'll take another look at the replay. See, there's the shot that goes wide, and then Carreri is Johnny on the spot, if you'll pardon the pun. Extending the Milton lead. It's just a matter of playing that lively bounce off the boards and now Shea with the aggressive poke check to knock that away. It was just a matter of playing that aggressively off the, playing it off the boards, getting there, and able to nudge it past with Shea so far out of position. Now just the Mustangs with numbers, sorry to interrupt, Dan. Shot in the save made by Ryder Shea. Just had to put it towards goal, get it in that net. Maybe easier said than done, but he was able Number to do just that. Line, number 18, Jonathan Carreri. Assist to number 16, Madden Powers. And number 12, Mason Chen. Madden Tiny Powers and Mason Chen with the assists on the goal from Carreri. Again, Carreri's second of the season. The second of the game for Milton gives them a 2-0 lead. Colin Walsh skates it in. His centering pass is deflected, comes to the near side boards. And the Mustangs will clear. Good stick work there by Ryan Shea, able to elude his defender. Now takes it behind the net, thinks wrap around, instead goes centering pass. Puck comes to the left wing corner. Cleared out up over the blue line. And all the way into the Milton end, no icing, as it is played there by Dylan Hunt. Hunt sends it along the near side boards for Heath. Heath dumps it up for Jinder. No weight, Drew. No weight, I'm making a wrestling joke. Instead, it goes all the way deep into the St. George's end. Grabbed there by Bryce O'Brien. He loses the handle, picked off by Brendan Marr. Marr's shot is deflected, goes over the net. That was almost a dangerous deflection off the dragon stick. Looked like the deflected shot totally fooled Shea, but it also got around the iron. 
Now in the Milton end. Cleared out to center. Shea will play as there's going to be no icing. Leaves it off for Anson Parker. Parker is pressured. He dumps it for Portland Hare. Hare can't hold on to it. Picked off by Milton. Good stick work again. Centering pass. Can't hold the handle. Shot deflected. Never gets in on Shea. Plenty of opportunities there for Madden Powers, but he couldn't quite find the right handle. Puck cleared all the way down into the Milton end. Again, no icing. Dragons aggressively check as they change defensemen behind. Freshman on the ice is Owen Mulhern. He gets the puck. Shot goes just wide of the net. Another shot off the back of the net. Portland Hare comes out with it. Hare comes to the point to Dratty. Dratty across ice. Goes for Peyton Tracy. Tracy's shot is deflected. Loose in front of the net. Ryan Magaletta can't put it home. Milton still unable to clear. Poked forward. Another chance. Mohern again tries to wrap around. Couldn't quite get it right. Oh, he had the open net, but he just wrapped it around into the iron. It bounced loose and was covered by Harrison Brown. Jay George has been stuck on 11 shots on goal for quite a while in this period. In the last few moments, they've gotten four on Brown, but he's been able to turn them all aside. Some good chances for the Dragons trying to find their first goal at ice. Face off one by Ted Pakedold, one shot. One, one timer goes wide of the net, easy for me to say. Everett Baldwin skating toward his own net, ultimately loses the handle, and it's sent in by the Mustangs. Goes along the far side boards for Danny Buckley, he clears. But Mason Chen has it at the red line, he sends it right back in. Shea steers it back behind him to his teammate Jake McIntosh. McIntosh flicks it up over the blue and red lines into the Milton end, but it's gonna go into the crease, so no icing. Instead, it's grabbed by Chen. He'll clear it out. Tried to hit Jake Cole, but the pass was a little bit too long. Chance for the Dragons now. Fought four along the near side boards. Pecknold can't handle it. Mika Kalichian skates to center. His shot goes just wide of the net. Chen gives chase as it comes along the near side boards. It falls to Henry Cohen. Cohen gets a pass off. Backhand shot goes wide off the stick of Jake Cole. Cole had the first goal for Milton back in the first period. Cole again. Tried to find a teammate, couldn't do it. Chen from the point, sends it back behind the net. Grabbed there by Buckley of the Dragons. He pokes it back for McIntosh. Jake McIntosh ahead to Colin Walsh, immediately loses the handle, but it finds its way to Tate Pecknold. Pecknold will dump it in, grabbed there by Chen. Chen was trying to hit Ryan Shea. Instead, he hit nobody in particular. It goes all the way down for an icing. Stop the clock with 11.18 to play here in the second period from the Wallace Civic Center. We mentioned, you know, with Milton Academy playing here at the Civic Center, the first three goals the Mustangs have scored between this year and last year, all scored by Jake Pohl. It's good to see someone else getting the scoring. I think with Jonathan Carreri, who gets just his second goal of the season. Getting assists from players who combined for 28 points on the campaign. It's just the second for Carreri, so good to see him get in on the action and take advantage of the situation as it developed. Anthony Sergeyev sends it all the way down for the Mustangs, played back there for Shea. He leaves it off for Peyton Tracy. Tracy drops back to Owen Dratty. Dratty finds Max Donatelli. Donatelli will dump it into the Mustang zone. Sent back behind the net, grabbed there by Buckley, but he can't hold on to it. It's cleared out, pursued by Tracy. Tracy sends it right back in. Teams battling in neutral ice. Mustangs have managed with it. This is Kanata. Kanata couldn't find his teammate, comes out to the point, shot save made. That was a hard shot by Jackson Faunen, the 18-year-old captain from Binghamton, New York, still looking for his first goal on the year. He took a heck of an effort at it, though, Dan. Big, heavy shot there from that right point. And we knew, you know, maybe a small step down in terms of the pace of play compared to our first game of Pittsburgh State and Plymouth State. But, you know, some of these players will be going on and playing Division Three hockey. A couple of them might be able to go on to play Division One. The sky can very much be the limit for these players. In fact, a recent Milton Academy player, Matty Veneers, now playing in the NHL with the Seattle Kraken. Madden Powers takes the shot. Save made by Shea, kicks out to the right side. I think that actually caught iron. Is it just, it was just pounded downwards onto the ice from the top left corner of the net. 
Powers again. His shot this time deflected. Goes wide. Powers backhand centering pass. Fought there by Carreri. Carreri sends it back behind the net. Brendan Marr gets a shoulder block for his trouble. But Madden Powers winds up with it. Centering pass is grabbed by the Dragons. Can't clear, however. Shot by Fawn and deflected. Goal! Into the back of the net, off the stick of Brendan Marr. A second goal in the second period for Milton, and it is now a 3-0 lead for the Mustangs. Another shot with pace from the point, and it found a stick on the way. And that was going to be so challenging for Shea to stop with the sudden change of direction. Mars fifth goal of the season. I'm pretty sure the initial shot came off the stick of Fawnen. He will have to wait another day for his first goal, but he picks up an assist. It'll be his fifth on the year. For Brendan Marr, as you said, Danny, it's his fifth goal. Makes it a 3-0 lead for Milton. Owen Mulhern sends it forward for Jake McIntosh. McIntosh Sticks it down behind the Milton net. Grabs there by Chen. He leaves it for Pohl. Shot deflected by Pohl. Baldwin wasn't looking for the top of the net behind the uh, boards, but that's what he found. Found a stick on the way and high into the netting and out of play. We're 10 seconds short of halfway in this contest. Milton Academy with a 3 0 lead over St. George's School. Face off will come to the left of Harrison Brown. Hasn't been tested too often. In this second period, there was a spate of action, but for the most part, it has been all Milton. Just that one little flurry of action, and since then, not much of anything. The Mustangs were defeated last year on Hockey Day in the Berg. They do not want a repeat. This is Pohl for Chen. His one-timer just barely goes wide. Crashing down on it was Henry Cohen. He couldn't find a stick. Pohl gives chase, bounce. Puck actually bounces off the stick of a referee, and Pohl's got another goal! A fortuitous bounce and then some. Jake Pohl's got his second of the game on goals that have come 52 seconds apart. This puck took a bounce off the referee's skate. Jake Pohl was able to pounce on it. He goes top right corner and beats Ryder Shea. Not a good period for the netminder for Marlboro. They could afford it nothing unless there's something illegal that we haven't noticed because they haven't put the goal on the board well, yet. Well, you know, they haven't put the fourth goal on the board. Teams are chatting it over at the sidelines. I, is it within the purview of the referee to say, you know, I just kind of kicked it to that guy. That wasn't fair. Uh, uh, there goes the fourth goal. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I think it was a timeout by St. George's. But after all, sometimes when certain things don't happen as you expect them, you're not quite sure what's to come from there. This is true. Dragons need a breather. We're just over halfway through this game. They find themselves down by four goals. We mentioned already this is a team that's lost their last four games. St. George's hasn't won since January 14th when they beat Groton. Probably say it's a bit of a compressed schedule too that this is they played in between that four games. And Bucky and Brown and Nichols lost four nothing, lost five two to St. Mark's, four three to Portsmouth Abbey, and then two nothing on Wednesday to Dexter Southfield. Great, there have been uh, oh another one. From the left side, William Kanata found a hole to make it five to nothing. Goals in bunches for the Mustangs. They just cannot be stopped right now. Out of the timeout, that's two goals in eight seconds, and that's it for Ryder Shea. Shea will head for the bench. Matthew Della Russo will take over in net. That's also three goals in 60 seconds for the Mustangs. They are galloping to a 5-0 lead. 
De La Russa, the 17-year-old from Gary, Connecticut, estimated numbers, 220 goals against, 925 save percentage. Draddy sends it along the near side boards for Colin Walsh. Walsh and Draddy fighting for it, comes back behind the St. George's net. Pursued there by Peyton Tracy. On it for Milton is Ryan Shea. Comes out to center, shot deflected, goes wide. Anthony Sergeyev wanted to get in on the goal scoring party, couldn't quite do it. Now Kanata again, his shot is deflected, and this time it goes up and finds the netting behind the boards. Eight minutes exactly left no, to play no, here George's. in what has been uh, a disaster of a second period for St. George's and a perfect period for Milton. How well it's all the developed. Third Milton goals by number five, Brendan Maher, assisted by the 17, Jackson Fogman. Time of that goal was 8.37. Fourth Milton Academy goals. Brandon Mars goal, assist, officially Sister assisted by, by Fawnen. Connor Lee, time of that goal was 916, second period. Fifth. Milton goal. PA is the final number 10, William Canada, assisted by number 8, Anthony Sergeyev. Time of that goal was 924, second period. So Connor Lee assisted on the goal by Pohl. Sergeyev assisted on the goal by Canada. You got all that straight? I think so. Okay. Just had to fill in a couple of the loose caps, but yeah, now you got to make up for all the work there when you run behind. But Jim LaFoyt's got a lot of things that he's got to take care of down low. And when three goals in 60 seconds come, sometimes it's challenging to keep caught up. I think we're going to get a penalty here. Seems like they're sending Nate Landau to the box. What's the X, Dan? Is that interference? I think. Yeah. Couldn't really tell if he was doing the X or if he was doing that. He well, was definitely doing the X. That it was interference. Okay. That'll be two minutes for number 22. St. George's will find themselves on the power play as they find as they try to find some way back into this one. Faceoff comes to the left of Harrison Brown. And Almost immediately, I think we're going to get another penalty. This is going to be boarding. Yeah, that would look pretty obvious. Dylan Hunt will join Nate Landau in the box. There were only four seconds of five on four. So we're going to get 156 of a two-man advantage for the Dragons. And you see here, right off the power faceoff, rather, that is pretty crystal clear example. That's uh, that's boarding. You can't do that. Fantastic work, as always, by the inanimate FATV camera operator there. St. George is now with the two-man advantage. First shot is blocked, goes into the left wing corner. Back out to the point for Everett Baldwin. Baldwin, forward, one-timer is saved. Pecknold had that shot. Comes back out to Walsh. Walsh leaves it for Pecknold. He'll skate forward, take a shot, it's blocked. Fawnen just sacrificing his left leg there, got himself in front of the rubber. Milton able to clear. 120 left on the two-man. Baldwin will skate it up and reset. Pecknell dumps it in. Chased for Milton by Chen. Chen is able to clear it, and St. George's will reset and do it again. Just basically made a complete lap of the ice. Baldwin will take it again. This is all staggeringly familiar. He leaves it off for Pecknell. Pecknell gains the blue line, beats one man, shot, score! Tate Pecknell narrows the deficit, makes it 5-1. St. George's will still have one man advantage. Nate Landau can come out of the box. Dylan Hunt has 55 more seconds on his punishment. Pecknold was really hungry on that shift. All that work he put in and you know, skating it all the way up ice there. On the run, gets the left dot, releases and just snipes it in the corner. Top right corner as hard as you can. It's a very difficult save to make. Harrison Brown couldn't do it, and it's 5-1 in favor of the Mustangs. St. George is still on the power play. Mulhern barely wasn't offside. 
but indeed he was not. Cleared out by Milton, chance for them if they hurry. William Kanata's got it, his shot save made. That's deflected up into the netting. We'll stop the clock with five and a half minutes to play in the period and 30 seconds on the power play. Assist on the goal by Pecknold goes to Everett Baldwin. It's his seventh of the season. For Pecknold, his seventh goal. Nice when things come together like that. Indeed. Faceoff comes to the right of Della Russo. Really hasn't been tested much since he came into the game. Pecknold looking for his second. He'll skate it behind the net. Comes back out to Buckley. Buckley tries to send it back in, but it comes out to center ice. Milton will clear. 15 seconds on the kill. Chance for them shorthanded if they want it. Madden Powers is dispossessed. Comes back this way for St. George's. Colin Walsh now, his shot, kick save. Almost got a screen there by Jackson Plonin. But Harrison Brown was up to the task and we're back to even strength. Five minutes to play here in the second period. Milton Academy leads 5-1. Hockey day in the Berg on FATV. John Gugarty joined, of course, by Dan Bolak. Thanks, as always, to the tremendous FATV crew. It's our first truck event since Thanksgiving, but you wouldn't know it to look at it. Hands up in the crowd. We get a uh, little pass that just goes up over the boards. Gives me a chance to tell my annual story about the time I almost died to do right on camera at this game. Uh -huh. I, I, you've heard the story before. I think I have. Well, one time, and this is back before we knew what the heck we were doing here at the Civic Center, we used to just set up cameras in the stands right next to the boards. And one time, a puck dang near winged me in the head. It was fun. That was back when they didn't trust me to talk. They didn't give me a live microphone. They just made me run a camera. Uh, we're once watching a Fitchburg Framingham game down at Laura Arena in Framingham. They have netting up for now around the boards, but they didn't then. I was hanging out with the scratches, and I was trying to check the live stats. They were lagging, and then a puck came into the stands out of play and was probably about f within five feet of me, and I did not flinch because I was not paying attention. I did the thing they tell you not to do in hockey games. You took your eye off the puck. I sure did. It almost ended poorly for you. It could have ended quite badly. I only realized it was coming my way when I saw the players around me try to get out of the way. <laughs> Mason Chen gains the blue line, loops it off for teammate, and another shot, pole shot goes wide. That is slid off of its moorings. They're gonna not stop play. Referee just goes in and plays it. Puck was all the way down the other end of the ice, so that's fine. Cleared out of the blue line. St. George's will have a long time to tag up. Gives them a chance to get, switch personnel. Opportunity for Milton. Long pass is played at about the blue line, so no icing as it is grabbed by Rocco Biafor. Biafor, the 18-year-old from Wakefield, Rhode Island. As the puck now comes all the way down ice, and this will be icing. 3.15 to play here. It is the Ides of the second period, so to speak. That doesn't really make sense, but go with me. 5-1 in favor of Milton. They got an early goal in the period to make it 2-0, and then three goals in the span of 60 seconds. Turned this one from a one-sided game into a rout. It also chased Ryder Shea to the bench and brought on Matthew Della Russo. Has Della Russo faced a shot on target since he's come in? Doesn't feel like he has. I, maybe one, maybe. Like that's a heavy maybe. Milton will look to make that maybe a fact. Steering in, shot steered away by Della Russo. That one came from Sergeyev. Sergeyev has an assist in this game as does it seems basically everyone on Milton. That's definitely a save made by Della Russo. So put him in the scorebook officially. Comes back out to William Kanata. Kanata's shot save made by Della Russo. Rebound save made by Della Russo. Comes back out loose, hits the referee again. This time it doesn't wind up a walk-in Milton goal, but a centering pass backhand shot. Nice save by Della Russo. Well, there are the saves you wanted, Dan. Matthew Della Russo finally getting involved in the action and acquitting himself quite well, I would say. You asked earlier about if the puck came off the referee would that be you know, a bit of a, too much of an advantage? And the answer I can give for you is if it went off the referee and directly into the net, 
then they would not award that. But if it goes off a referee and to a player, that is fine. Because at the end of the day, the referee is part of the ice surface, if you will. That's true. They're a moving hazard. Yeah, you, you gotta have somebody call the, call the penalties as they happen, and the best way to do that is dudes on the ice. Shot save made by Brown. Kept in by McIntosh. Now back behind the Milton net, along the near side boards for Marr. Marr will send it cross ice, try to hit Jonathan Carreri. Just under two minutes to play here in the second period. Carreri loses the handle. Sent along the near side boards for Longfield. Longfield can't clear on the first attempt, but he can on the second. Comes out to center ice where it's grabbed by Jackson Faunen. Faunen has an assist already. Comes back out to the point. Shot save made. Madden Powers took a big swing, but the 19-year-old from Glendale, California was rejected by Matthew Della Russo. Del Russo flashing the leather a little bit and then trying to make sure I've got this right. I definitely have this. Yes, I've got this. Always good to make sure you've got it. Face off comes to his left, won by the Mustangs. Poked toward the face off circle, but sticked out of the zone and all the way down the ice, chased by Kurt Heath. Heath will send it to Chen. Chen now. Back to Kalichian. Kalichian gains the blue line, loses the handle, goes to the right wing corner. Kalichian leaves it off for Pole. Pole back to Chen. Chen cross ice for Landau. Landau sends it in off the leg of Pole. He kind of kicked that one with his left thigh. Comes back out to Pole at the faceoff circle, but he loses the handle. St. George's is able to clear. 50 seconds left in the period, 5-1 in favor of Milton. It's a long way to go for the Dragons. If they can find a second goal, it would feel that much shorter. Milton has the four goal lead. They want to salt it away. Turn over here, two on none opportunity, but unable to follow up is Donatelli. Max Donatelli had a golden chance to narrow this deficit and couldn't do it. Now dumped in, but St. George's is offside. They need to tag up. Hole gives chase into the right wing corner. Leaves it there for Kalichian. Kalichian shot save made, rebound save made. Kalichian is upended, sticks go flying. We get a whistle. See more action and more drive really in the last few minutes. You can see St. George's even though down by four goals. Still making some plays, still getting some effort there. For Donatelli is looking for his first goal of the year. He's a young player, just 15 years old. Nine assists in the campaign, but still looking for his first goal and had a good effort there, but sometimes life comes at you just a bit too fast. Initial faceoff came right in on net and was covered up by Della Russo. The second one comes to the near side, less than 10 seconds to play here in the period. If anyone's gonna score, it's gonna be Donatelli, but the puck is just fought for along the far side boards, and that is a huge hit. Right at the end of the period, Colin Walsh Colin Walsh came in and leveled Dylan Hunt. Walsh is gonna spend at least the first two minutes of the third period in the penalty box. I would be mildly surprised if he plays any more hockey today. And they send him straight to the locker room here. And I wonder if they'll even allow him to emerge from the locker rooms to start the third period. That was a heavy hit into the boards. It looked like he had his stick out as a cross check and to cross-check Dylan Hunt into the boards like that was uh, ruthless and dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, there are other words you can use. Reckless, I'm gonna go with reckless. A very hard hit, we'll take another look at it. Right in the dying moments, like there's two seconds on the clock, no good is gonna come of this. There is but no Walsh. reason to lay that hit. Considering the time of the game, considering everything, there's no reason to do that. Not quite a full head of steam, but still a big hit on a defenseless player who wasn't expecting it. I think I'm gonna add dirty. That was a dirty hit. We will see if Walsh is allowed to continue or if that is it for him. He is 
the leading goal scorer by quite a bit for St. George's, so it'll be a big loss for them if he is not allowed to continue. But uh, I think that would be the right call, personally <laughs> speaking. Is that a five-minute major and a game misconduct I just heard announced? That is what I heard, and that is the correct call. Yeah. Huge hit by Walsh right in the dying moments of an absolute disaster of a second period for St. George's. It was 1-0 Milton coming in. It is 5-1 Milton coming out. The Mustangs, Dan, just completely controlled that period. Indeed, started with that goal there from all that time ago from Jonathan Carrera, getting his second goal of the season, and then three goals in 60 seconds. It came fast and it came furiously. Brendan Marr on a redirection. Jake Paul taking advantage of some lucky bounces, and then William Kanata on the left side just tossing one on goal from a tight angle, and it snuck past Shea, and you know after that one, Shea had to come out. That was one where he was rattled. And to concede that goal like that, it makes sense that the 10th year head coach, Jeff Dwyer, would call for a new keeper. Call the timeout after the fourth goal. Try to calm his team down, let them know that they're still in this one. Then Shea conceded the fifth, and that was it. Matthew Delarusso came in and held a clean sheet for the rest of the period. But uh, that's a bit of closing the barn door when the Mustang has left, if you'll pardon the expression. 5-1 is the score for Milton Academy. Tate Pecknold was able to get a goal for the Dragons after it was 5-0, get them back in a little bit. So, hey, you know, Milton scored four in the second. It's at least conceivable that St. George's will score four in the fifth, but they will do so without the services of their leading goal scorer, Colin Walsh, a five-minute major and a game of misconduct, very well-deserved game of misconduct, if I do say so myself. Dan and I will take the break with the players and have the third period of action for you in a moment. Don't go anywhere, folks. It is Hockey Day in the Berg on FATV. We are back at the Wallace Civic Center here on Hockey Day in the Berg on FATV. I'm John Gurgity, joined, of course, by Dan Bolak. And Dan, just a scant 18 minutes of hockey ago, we were talking about a 1-0 game where, sure, Milton looked like the better team, but St. George's was right in it. And now, well, not so much. Yep. We go into the third period, 5-1 Milton Academy in front, and they get five minutes on the power play to open the frame. It looked for a moment like St. George's might have a shadow of a prayer of a ghost of a chance of coming back from their 5-0 deficit after the goal by Tate Pecknell made it 5-1. They controlled the place of play going into that, going into the end of the period. And then, well, Colin Walsh got angry and he did a bad thing. He did. But he sent Dylan Hunt into the boards from behind in a really bad spot on the ice. It's a well-justified five in a game for the leading score for the Dragons. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from a very explosive th second period of action for the Milton Academy. They put four goals on the board. Made it 5-1 in total. Tremendous second period it was for the Mustangs. Dragons really had no answer for them. Ryder Shea, who started this goal between the pipes for St. George's, was ultimately pulled. See one of the goals there, that one by Madden Powers. A big hit delivered there. There were a lot of big hits, big clean hits. Then there were some big and not so clean hits. But there was a whole lot of it about in the period. Let's see, that was one of the snipes there, one of those great shots taken. Then the deflection oh, and a goal, that was the one by Marr off the stick of Jackson Fawnen. That was the goal by Pohl, getting a hold of the loose puck. 
4-0 already at this point. Just right off the draw after a timeout. Kanata, tight angle, and it finds a hole there. That was the end of Ryder Shea's night. A number of chances, a number of goals. You see the frustration building for St. George's. That hit by Anson Parker on Jake Allieri. It was matched. Dylan Hunt delivered a hit of his own. He served time in the box for that. Tate Pecknold got the goal that made it 5-1. And then again, right at the end of the period, Colin Walsh sending the man into the boards. He will spend no more time playing hockey today. St. George's will be shorthanded for the first five minutes. At most, it could be less. They don't want it to be less. But for them, it'll be five minutes, five on four, as Dan Bullock has the call for period number three. Actually, they probably do want it to be less, because that means they got a penalty Yep, Milton Academy. But nonetheless. That's true. That's a fair point. Yes. Milton Academy in the home white uniforms with the big orange M on the chest and the blue pants. They're going from left to right. St. George's in the road black uniforms with white numbering, red trim. They go right to left. And so again, major power play. You can see Tate Pecknold getting in on the action. Already with that goal, throws that bad angle shot. And you can see he's still hungry. He's hungry to try to lead a comeback for his Dragon side. This is the first time we've actually seen the Milton Academy power play today. As until that hit by Walsh, they had been clean disciplinary-wise. Puck popping around on the near side of the net, and Matthew Della Russo is able to get his glove on that and bring a stoppage to play with 50 seconds gone in the third period. Both teams will change all their skaters, so we get nine new bodies on the ice. Della Russo, 17 years old, from Darien, Connecticut. That shot cut down in front. Second chance on the backhand is going to be stopped by Del Russo. Del Russo's acquitted himself well. It's got to be a tough situation, Dan, particularly when you're usually, you know, your tandem goal keeping. Del Russo has seen the lion's share of the action. Kind of expected he would get a night off, but, you know, halfway through the second period, you're down 5 nothing. Ryder Shea clearly doesn't have it. you got to get in there, man. Shea made 35 saves on 37 shots just a few days ago against Dexter Southfield. But today, solid enough in the first period, but the wheels fell off in the second. And so Del Russo had to come in as that puck knocked out of play. We mentioned in the second, you know, Matty Beneers, a recent Milne Academy player, played for the Mustangs in 2017-18. For St. George's, I can tell you there's no one currently in the NHL who played at St. George's, but Matt Tartaglio, who we saw in the first game for Plymouth State. He played for St. George's for three years. That's at least the most relevant of the alumni I could pull up there. I mean, there's still plenty of alumni for St. George's playing actively right now. It's just a matter of, I think that one's the most fitting. That does make sense. 325 to go on the major, and it'll be skated up the ice by Cortland Hare. Hare will be dispossessed by Kurt Keith. Need to carry it behind the net around to the near side. And from the neutral zone, dumped in by Peyton Tracy from Fort Myers, Florida. Funny thing, when I was putting together the roster, I had two different sources, and I found they both misspelled Fort Myers in different ways. <laughs> yes, uh, Fort Myers only has one E in Myers, and it is Fort Myers, not 40 Myers. Good to know. I would like to know where a 40 Myers would be. I would like to know where uh, Riga Lativia is. We heard that <laughs> announced earlier today. It's some people's first day sometime, I presume. This is true. Or everyone has a first. Or people need to better associate themselves with the Baltic states. Yeah, that sounds like work. Yeah, like, there's only three of them. Wait, I thought there was two. There's Baltic and Mediterranean, and they're the first two. Well, it's Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Those are the three Baltic states. Anyway, this conversation's gone weird, but that's only because Milton hasn't been able to do anything on the power in the last 60 seconds or so. But now they're, now they're starting to work on stuff. Mason Chen carries up into the left wing corner, around the boards on the right side, taking a bye, William Kanata. Hey, if you think we're punchy now, just imagine if the third game's a blowout. Third game is going to be very interesting. 
We'll have a whistle with 14.49 to go in the third. I believe it was a hand pass. Pittsburgh Monty Tech taking on St. Bernard's. Pittsburgh Monty Tech is 8-4. St. Bernard's 9-3. The last time the Bernardians lost you know, was to this, was to that Pittsburgh Monty Tech team back in December the 21st. Since then, the Bernardians going on quite the winning streak. They only had two wins in their last two years. Pandemic and other factors related to the pandemic and how they played hockey that year partially factored into why the win total was so low, at least that year. But already they've won eight on the bounce since losing to Pittsburgh Monty Tech, and now they get that revenge match. And we look forward to that. That will be a 7.30 start time provisionally. Obviously, uh, I think we can put heavy emphasis on the phrase provisionally. Uh, the clock drifts. What time we got right now? It is currently 7.16. I don't think they're going to drop the puck at 7.30. They could go to a running clock and not drop the puck at 7.30. Yeah. But we, get, we got some shots there of the two sides. They're already dressed. They're ready to go. They were told 7.30. They knew they would be ready for 7.30. But we had some action. We had an overtime game in the first game of Hockey Day in the Berg. This Limit, is true. Limit State winning in overtime over Fitchburg State in the last five seconds. That close Fitchburg State was to giving Plymouth their first blemish in conference play. But uh, to an extent, they still kind of did because 3-2-1 system. But... We had an exciting game of hockey, and this one is still pretty exciting. 36 seconds left on the major penalty before the Dragon is released from the bin. Didn't catch who's serving it, so. On the it's far. a mystery Dragon. Behind the Tic Tac toe board somewhere. That is a reference I do not expect people to get. Yeah, no, it's Bryce O'Brien in the box. Eight seconds to go on the advantage. McIntosh gets it to the red line and dumps it in. That'll probably kill off the rest of it. O'Brien does come out of the box, just waits for it. Now he comes out. Just waiting for the play to come by him. So he wasn't just jumping right out there and creating a surprising obstacle. That uh, was smart of him. Powers trying to center. Couple of dragon sticks knocked that down. Rocky Bihori out to the far side for O'Brien. Big shot on the boards. It's sent to the neutral zone and now back into the dragon end. 12.32 to go in third period. 5-1 Milton Academy in front. On the near side, that pops over a stick. That was Buckley, couldn't handle it. And it goes all the way down for an icing. Hockey's a game where it's very hard to see you know, it, it, it's hard for a team to totally take your foot off the gas, but in as much as you can see it, I think Milton is content to just kind of play out this third period. St. George's really hasn't been able to muster any kind of a major offensive presence in the first few minutes here. And as long as that's the case, there's a shot, a save, a rebound, and a goal! Curse of the commentator, Dan. Saw a little bit in the first game, and we see a little bit of it there. Milton ready for that one after the initial save made by Della Russo. Henry Cohen leads the handshake line as the five goal lead is restored. It's as if he heard me say content and was like, we're not content, we want more goals. Cohen makes it 6-1 in favor of the Mustangs. And that will be the end of the day for Harrison Brown. Jonah Nash coming in, get a little bit of ice time. The 17-year-old from Bellevue, Washington. This is his first career game. Based on the statistics I could find. So Jonah Nash getting in goal now. And that's a great time to bring him in, too, I think. When you've got the opportunity there in a game that is as lopsided as it's been, and you're confident enough in your defense Get him some playing time, 17 year old, 5'10", 170 pounds. Assist to number 12, Mason Chen, and number seven, Jacob Paul. Paul gets another point to his account. Mason Chen, another assist as well. Plus, you know, it's, 
obviously you're dealing with an 18-year-old kid. You're not exactly dealing with a, a, a veteran professional hockey player, but minutes are minutes. Ice time is ice time. A little bit of unplanned rest for Harrison Brown. Might come in handy further down the season. You never know. Good time to do it. Indeed. That one sticked aside by De La Russo. So both teams now playing keepers who did not start this game. But again, never see a goal. We have three goalies on each team. Dragons also have Nick Barnes, 17-year-old from Newport, Rhode Island, who has not played a game this season, near as we could confirm. And we talked about Sam Caulfield, who has had more the most starts for Milton this year, 10 games played compared to Brown's seven coming into today. <laughs> Shot through traffic cut down in front. And Milton really having one of their better performances of the season, it so feels. Their high goal toll on the campaign is seven back on December the 16th against Deerfield Academy. That was a 7-0 shutout. That one thrown towards goal and sticked away by Della Russo. <laughs> Maybe in that game you just keep your starter in there because you kind of want to see if you can get that shutout. But this time around, you know, with the goal already conceded, makes it all the more easier to pull round for Nash. Get a whistle here as the puck was played with a high stick by William Kanata. There's Kanata right there. You know what I've noticed, Dan? Yes. The PA folks here at the Wallace Civic Center, they really, really like late 2010s WWE entrances. I have heard Seth Rollins' entrance music more times here at the Wallace Civic Center than I have watching television in the last two years. <laughs> That was dropped off, and the shot taken by Hunt goes wide of the goal. Is that because I don't watch WWE anymore because it's freaking terrible? Yes. Yes, it is. That plays a part. Yeah, that could play a factor. Yeah. Royal Rumbles tonight. Yeah. On a Saturday? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that... they, they do weird stuff now. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Back in my day, they put the featured events on the Sunday nights. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago that I watched wrestling. <laughs> but anyway, 10 minutes to go in regulation time. 6-1, Milton in front. As they battle for it in the neutral zone. The Dragons already net down their leading scorer and Colin Walsh ejected from the contest for a hit at the end of the second period. That was far from clean. Now some moves there by Buckley, and the captains for this dragon side. Trying to protect the puck, but too many Mustangs to pull it away. Now driving up ice, left side shot taken by Brennan Maher. Had a redirection goal in the second. That shot turned aside by Matthew Del Urso. Went to the near side, Ryan Magaletta with a touch on, 15 year old with an assist. He's from Southboro. from the general Central Mass area. South for the boroughs are right on the fringe. Are there some of the boroughs count as Central Mass and some don't think they all count as Central Mass? I think of them as Metro West. I don't know how that fits into the Eastern Central paradigm, but that's how I always thought of them. I consider them Central Mass mainly because all of the uh, high schools in those communities, all the public high schools, are considered Central Mass. Well, that makes sense. I certainly wouldn't group Marlboro into the same area as you know, Boston, Roxbury. That doesn't feel right. Right on the fringe of 495. Yeah. Oh, 495 cuts through those communities. It does indeed. The right circle shot save by De La Russo. Speaking of 495, of the 16 road. teams in the ISL, the Independent School League, 12 of them located inside Interstate 495. I see. But we see one of the odd one outs here in St. George's, down in, Connecticut, in uh, Rhode Island. We had that right earlier, Middletown, Rhode Island. There are three other ones, Tabor Academy, that's in Marion, that's near the Cape. And then there's two other ones a bit closer to home that being the Lawrence Academy and Groton School, both located in Groton, just a few towns over from here. You know, I would have guessed that Groton School is in Groton. Yep. 
Then again, we did have a member of our crew, and I won't say who because I like and respect this person. We did have a member of our crew ask where Milton Academy is during the intermission. Yes. If it were Milton Academy, it is in Milton. Yes, it is. Sometimes it is, in fact, that obvious. Sometimes it's not. Hey, you know. And in the neutral zone, tied up there is Kalikian with the pass off and the shot taken by Kurt Heath. It's offline. 7.30 to go in regulation time and a 6-1 lead for Milton Academy. I kept having to try to tell myself that, you know, that uh, Lawrence Academy was the other school in Grodda, not the Middlesex school. Because Grodda is in Middlesex County. That's true. I thought that made more sense. And they're also in different divisions, too, in the ISL for whatever <laughs> reason. <laughs> Make those games all the more special. And St. George is still looking for a shot on goal since Jonah Nash came into the game. Yeah, Nash has not been tested since his skates hit the ice. He's been moving around a bunch in the blue paint, but hasn't really had a chance to really do anything. Yeah, positioning looks fine. Fundamentals are solid. He holds a mean water bottle, I'll tell you that much. He's had a chance to escape the blue paint during the stoppages. He'll skate around a little bit. It's in the Dragon's End, dug out by Rocky Bifori. Milton trying to steal it away. Strong stick work on the far side. Brian Shea trying to get a hold of that one. Now Kenata stumbled a little bit back on his feet. On the far side, and here comes St. George's. Right side again, trying to get themselves in a shooting position. Got a couple of shots off. Nash able to get the pad down. He bats down the hatches and then pushing and shoving afterwards. Well, we said he hadn't faced any shots and suddenly a few of them came all at once. Curse of the commentator, Dan. Yeah. For some reason, it's uh, really flowing tonight. <laughs> There's also some uh, annoyances and grievances exchanged between the two teams behind just, the net afterwards. Just a few. I think uh, Milton was not too happy with Ben Buckley nearly knocking a Mustang off his feet only you know, 45 seconds after the whistle blew. By my, by my research, believe that ultimately results in you know, the first career saves for Jonah Nash. So that one cleared out of the zone, down the ice and will go. Picked up on the far side, and dug out by Madden Powers. Onto the right wing corner. Into the left circle. Out to the left point in a shot. That one coming from Chen. That goes wide of the cage. And on the far side, St. George is settling it. Brian Magaletto with a long stretch pass. Trying to hit Jagger Lucas up ice. Milton has had none of that. St. George is again just trying to get it out of their own end. They get it out of their own end for a moment, and then it doesn't take long for Milton to really double back and bring it back. There's Powers again trying to split two defenders. That was a task too tall. Portland Hare. Is that taken away? Shot saved by De La Russa. 4.50 to go in this contest. It settled down one timer. Didn't get good wood on that one, was Heath. And a second chance cut down by the defense. Maybe a stop made in there by De La Russo as well. Powers on the far side. Being pressured by McIntosh. As his pocket picked Danny Buckley. Trying to skate it up, gets to the red line. But you can see St. George is really having trouble sustaining any form of offensive pressure, really even getting it past the neutral zone. Feels like they've been playing a step behind in this third period, and that's pretty fair. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Sorry, I went quiet there for a minute. I was losing. Yeah. Good. Planning some logistics for later. Indeed. Special guests for the next game and all that. Of course. Icing called against Milton. Face off to one side of Jonah Nash. He has made a save on a shot. 
It was a good save. It was solid. He got his pad down. He covered the puck. There are players all in front of him. There was lots of pressure. It was hectic. But he was cool under pressure. Finally gets that save out of the way, that first career save as far as we know. And there's another turnaround shot from a deep angle, and Nash turns that aside with the left pad. Players getting tangled up on the far side is Peyton Tracy. They'll pass it along. And that's flipped up and down the ice. Trying to find Donatelli. Now there's a chance. Pecknell shoots, scores! Second of the game for Tate Pecknold. The 17-year-old from Fairfield, Connecticut, now with goal number eight on the season, makes it 6-2. to two. It's just so hard to stop if you're a goaltender. Tate Pecknold gets so much velocity behind that quick wrist shot, top right corner. You'll see it again here on the replay. It's a beautifully timed pass, and then all he has to do is line up, pick his spot, and he hits it. 6-2 now in favor of Milton. Both of the goals for the Dragons coming from the 17-year-old Pecknold. So St. George is able to get a second at least. That one dumped down and will go for icing. Stop the clock there with 3.15 to go, three and a quarter. Reminder, after this game, we're going to have game number three of Hockey Day in the Berg. Bonnie Tech will take on St. Bernard's. That game was scheduled for a 7.30 start, but it's currently 7.31, so I don't know. 7.45, 7.50 maybe. That sounds right. It'll take a little bit of time. You've got to clean off some ice, and then the players will take to the ice, and they'll warm up for seven minutes. And then we'll have some hockey for them. Again, all proceeds from today's triple header here at the Wallace Civic Center going to the Tebow Family Rehabilitation Trust. You can go to fatv.org slash tbo14. That'll take you directly to the GoFundMe page for that very worthwhile cause. So we saw that puck come out of play really into the uh, beyond the top row on the near side so now we've had a puck fly up on both ends yeah that one was closer to us than the last one if they're homing in we're going to have a problem yeah we don't need them to get any closer than they are now no at the left point moved along by Paul two goals for the captain goes into the left wing corner back to Paul he tries to keep that in he's not going to be able to do so on the stretch, taken at the red line by Connor Lee. Around the boards, behind the net. Nifori, there for the Dragons. Able to get it along for Everett Baldwin. Mustangs mount some resistance, but now they'll bring it up. The Dragons do on the right side. Behind the net, can't really get themselves turned around for a shot to the neutral zone where it's sent back in by Hare. Approaching two minutes to go in this contest. A 6-2 lead for Milton Academy. They lost in overtime in last year's Hockey Day in the Berg. As there's a great chance, a save there. And a penalty drawn too on the break by Henry Cohen. Cohen was camped out right at the blue line just barely onside when he received that pass. It was one on one, only De La Russo to beat. Couldn't do it. But Milton will find themselves on the man advantage once again as Anson Parker goes to his room and thinks about what he's done. He'll remain in that room for the remainder of regulation time or until Milton gets a seventh goal, whatever occurs first. Just the second power play of the day for Milton Academy. We're not able to find a goal on the major power play that opened this period. As it was cleared out, it's brought back into the right wing corner. Trying to move it along, stick there, knocked down by Hare, trying to stretch it out for Owen Mohern. Mohern all by himself. 
And the pressure on. Build Academy getting a hold of it. Bring up ice. Mika Kalikian. With the pass just out of the reach of multiple sticks. And Milton back behind their own net. Under a minute to go in this contest. 6-2 in favor of the Mustangs. As it's dumped in and it'll be covered. We'll have another draw coming. Got to say, Dan, Della Russo has really stepped up well in a, an unenviable position coming in when the game is already well out of hand. He has been able to keep Milton at bay for the most part. Down at 13 shots, face now 14. And he's been able to turn aside 13. That's set all the way down the ice. 30 seconds to go. Players getting tangled up behind the net. And more discipline to be metered out. I think they're going to send William Kanata for the to the box for a big hit he delivered to Will Longfield. Longfield will head to the bench for a breather. See Kanata coming in here behind the play, just slamming Longfield into the boards. Not quite as egregious as the hit by Walsh that landed him the game misconduct earlier, but still well outside the rules of hockey, gentlemen. Stop doing that. So we'll finish four on four unless we get more tomfoolery. I think we're good on the tomfoolery part. Uh, we've had enough tomfoolery. I would care for no chicanery. No shenanigans. Generally speaking, no nonsense. And we'll have none of that as we come to an end here in game number two of Hockey Day in the Burn. It's the Milton Academy Mustangs with a decisive 6-2 victory over the St. George's School Dragons. Last year in the inaugural Hockey Day in the Burn, Milton Academy fell to the Pomfret School, but this time it was absolute dominating victory for them. They were buoyed by a tremendous second period, four goals in that 18 minute span, three of them coming within one minute of time just to salt this one away. Milton was favored coming in, the 11-4-2 record against the 10-8 and of St. George's. They looked a much better side today, Mr. Bolak. They did, and a strong game throughout for Milton Academy. Two goals for Jake Pohl, matching the two goals he got last year here in Hockey Day in the Berg. Strong performance and goal by Harrison Brown, 17 saves on 19 shots. Jonah Nash makes his debut, goes two for three. For St. George's, Tate Pecknold gets the two goals, son of Quinnipiac head coach Rand. Tried to look that up at the end of the game. My internet wasn't being nice. Thought that name sounded familiar to me. So great pedigree of scoring there for Tate, getting two goals on eight on the season. And he looked well engaged for the 54 minutes as he was one of the very bright spots that St. George's had to bring to the table today. Yeah, he was getting after it every shift, every time he was on the ice. You saw him flying up and down, slamming shots into the back of the net. Very good game for Pecknold, unfortunately for him and the rest of the Dragons. The other players just weren't able to keep up. We want to thank our tremendous crew. You see them there, our director, Robin Como, for this game did tremendous work, as she always does. Travis Falk, our technical supervisor, wizard in charge of dang near everything. FATV would not be what it is if not for Travis Falk, so thank you as always to Travis. Dylan O'Brien, Evan Schockenbach, Caitlin Mobilia, Seth Rigby, and Nate Glennie handled the camera work today. They all did a fantastic job. It was Dylan's first time running the main game camera, and I would say he acquitted himself very well. Thank you to all of them for their work. Todd Govan, excellent as always on replay as well. And Danny, you and I did all right. We did. We did fine. It was a hockey game, we called it. It was a good one. It was a 6-2 victory for the Milton Academy Mustangs. The second of three in the books here from Hockey Day in the Berg at the Wallace Civic Center. 
thank you for watching us. We will see you next time on FATV.